Hi everyone and welcome to this special ENA webinar to celebrate Social Media Day. So I'm here today with Joe Maddams, who's the Emergency Planning Officer for Northamptonshire County Council over in the UK. Um, and she's here to talk to us about the 30 Days, 30 Ways campaign. So this is a really fantastic commu communications campaign that uses, so uses social media to improve personal preparedness and resilience in the United Kingdom, but also beyond. So Joe, thank you so much for joining us. And now I'm going to pass over to you to speak about your campaign, 30 Days, 30 Ways UK. Thank you, thank you. And thank you for giving us the opportunity to actually present about 30 Days, 30 Ways UK um, to give people a bit, little bit more information about what the, what the programme is and what we're trying to achieve. Um, if I if I firstly start with preparedness, so um, we are working from is the UN uh, definition of preparedness, um, which is there. So when you when we come on to say what Thirty Days Thirty Ways UK is, it's a structured emergency risk communication method based so so um, entirely on social media. We do um, offer a, um, an email so people can actually email and we can email them um, the challenges each day, but it is majority based on social media. Um, it's multi-stakeholder, so um, we run the the um, 30 Days 30 Ways sort of website and Twitter, Twitter and um, in, um, social media accounts, um, but we do rely on others signing up for this and locally promoting the themes of each each day. Um, it's locally relevant all hazard approach, so it's looking at what risks there are in um, in areas and building on that each day within the themes. Um, it, <clears throat> we emphasise on actions for personal preparedness, so what people can actually do to be a little bit more better prepared from a theme uh, each day. Um, it's positive psychology approach to build trust, inform, inspire and empower. Um, and it's gamified to increase engagement. So we've made it as a bit of a sort of a fun, lighthearted, um, and we have an overall bingo approach. So when people cross off um, a day, uh, they, do the, they do the day, they cross it off on their bingo sheet. Um, and it's a daily themed activity um, where we say it was a challenge, but we, we, we're now uh, this year, we're going to call it more of a skill. So they pick up skills each day to help them get a little bit better prepared. Um, and overall, September, is prepared as month each year. We've been running this um, since um, for the last five years, so this will be our sixth year. Um, although uh, we, it has started ten years ago over in Clark County in the US, so they started it ten years ago now, um, where they they had the gamified approach um, as well. But they also gave out prizes for people to make sure that they um, tried to. Um, you know, got people engaged and they gave out prizes. Uh, we changed ours to a bit of a bingo approach, um, which seems to work. So if we zoom out a little bit now and look at the sort of wider picture, um, the World Health Organization and the Sendai framework and how we link in there. Um, so you've got the uh, planning and then um, where it's highlighted in red, um, that's where we come in with the preparation um, and that's how we sort of fit ourselves in with with the sort of international um, campaign and then the same day framework there's some been some work um, interesting um, you can probably get it from the link from here um, he, Professor Hugh Demin um, looked at how the Sendai framework linked in with UK resilience um, partners and how that that works and there's four priorities um, two, prior, two of those is how it fits in with 30 days, 30 ways. And the first one's about understanding risk. Um, and each of the, the, the themes of the 30 days, we link in with what risks, you know, people are facing. And then priority four is in, in enhancing the disaster preparation. So how, that's how it links in with the Sendai framework. So how does it work locally to her? So we've got the Civil Contingencies Act, uh, World Health Organization, the UN. Um, so we do have a professional volunteer network. Um, we do have a website and we collaborate on Resilience Direct, which is the cabinet office um, web-based platform for all of the resilience partners in the UK to share information. 
So we have got a page on there so people can pick up information. We have core partners that we work with each year. These are local resilience forums um, and these resilience forums pull together local responders, fire, police, health, um, to actually um, give out their key messages, but more on a local level. But then we do um, um, engage with national partners, um, such as the RNLI, the um, Environment Agency, the Met Office, um, some of the sort of national four by four groups, um, and they they support various days as well. So in fact, September is preparedness month. Um, we do have the annual reports um, from each year. Um, we have the, um, obviously we've got a Twitter page, Facebook page, Instagram page, we've got a YouTube account. And as I said before, we do have email um, for people that perhaps don't have social media, but they ha they get emailed each day, the daily theme and what, what they can do to be better prepared each day. So in the Civil Contingencies Act, how we fit in um, to the Civil Contingencies Act, um, part of the duties is there is to uh, assess, plan and advise and warn, um, warn inform the public and that fits in really well with the National Risk Register and the risk that we, we are um, with the themes of each day, how it fits in. And then in um, 2019 we were quite lucky because Community Resilience Framework came out and it fits in really well um, and it's very helpful how we plugged into this um, by enabling resilient behaviours. Um, so it fits in very well, 30 days, 30 ways, fits in with what they're, what, what's all coming together. And then in 2020, um, Professor Duncan Shaw um, released a paper about understanding risk. Um, he mentioned now is a great time um, to actually um, talk to the public about wide scale, wide scale risk um, before people become delusioned and fatigued with COVID-19 um, and how to educate the public on risk and resilience and how mass volunteering builds resilience um, and how to convert and talk to sort of children and young persons about um, preparedness and, and this is about the right time so it's great to, to know that you know we're trying to get preparedness message out there and uh, we have got back in from sort of um, you know professors that are, are looked into this so how it fits in it, it's working really well um, so what does success look like so um, there is um, back in the 1990s um, in Texas um, they uh, produced a character called uh, Wally Wise Guy. Um, he was um, he was um, a very um, <laughs> a large character, um, but but they evaluated this th uh, thoroughly, and it and it and it works. It was a it was a known character, um, and I think when you go to social media, I think you need to actually have you know have that um, tweet, it's, it's those like at the bottom of here, it's knowing what, what's going to get people's, um, you know, uh, to pick it up. Um, and I think, you know, and it, as it said, being prepared is essential. It's trying to convince people that we, we need them to be um, prepared. So going on to our 2020 campaign, um, as I said, uh, we have got a new website coming on board at the end of July, um, which um, will have a partners page. We do have um, the bingo sheet, um, as, I've, as I've said, um, and where we're changing from last year. Uh, again, we are looking at informing, connecting, inspiring personal and collective action um, via social media. Um, we have launched um, this year's schedule, um, so if people would like a copy of this year's schedule, um, then um, the emails at the end of this presentation. The um, what we would what we do say in the UK that we do keep the themes sim same every day. So whether um, you you're in Cumbria or um, Sussex or Surrey. Um, you are you are saying the same message. It might be localized um, to 
um, those places. Um, there's so much out there that um, people are doing um, at grassroots and, and at local resilience forums and health and local authorities. It's trying to build and share that those messages. Um, and again, um, it's, it's sort of sharing best practice from each um, organisation as well and knowing what everyone's doing. And I think that's that's great to sort of learn from others about how things have, have um, you know, how, how what they're doing it for their local uh, communities and how uh, they, we can perhaps adapt them for others. So each day um, we have uh, we have strand strand hosts that participate throughout 30 Days 30 Ways UK. Um, these are typically, as I said, they're typically local resilience forums um, and um, county councils, local authorities, police um, that actually play each day. Um, we do find that um, some of the voluntary organisations have, have sort of played each day. And as you can see from the list, um, the, the partners have grown over the last five years. Um, to from sort of 41 partners to 655 partners. And as you can see there, there's a whole mix of LRF, um, media, police, uh, commercial, voluntary. Um, so we have strand hosts that participate throughout. We also have day hosts that lead and participate on special uh, days. And these um, are um, for, for themes um, like run, hide, tell, um, that the police lead, or it might be about flooding that the environment agency leads. Um, so specific days um, we have a, and they're sort of the national hosts. And then uh, we have partners. So they, they participate throughout 30 days um, um, UK um, and, and they're the, such as environment agency Met office. Obviously, I mean, you can see the uptake uh, has been phenomenal, phenomenal uh, from uh, 2015, 2019. Um, we are more engaged this year. Uh, we've just had the Emergency Planning Society saying that they're backing us um, and that everyone um, should within the UK sort of take part. So who knows where 2020 is going to lead us, um, but it's going to be, a, I think, a good year. Um, we like maps and it's great to see how we've spread <laughs> um, over, over the last five years. And as you can see each year, um, the, the message has spread and more, more um, counties in the UK are playing um, as we move on. So um, hopefully, again, like I said, 2020 is going to be a good year and we can see that um, the whole of the UK um, field. Um, we do monitor um, the impact of each day. Um, we use um, methods of, of seeing how, how um, the volume of each on Twitter um the uh 2018 we had the spike and that was the um respect the water one that rni led um that was a spike for 2018 um we did have um a bit of a spike in 2019 uh where we had the grab bag spike um they were um i'll come on to the next slide and talk a bit about the grab bag in a minute the um Oh, the 2019 uh, grab bag day it did see quite um go viral um the police scotland control rooms uh, did the first tweet of the day and from there it um kicked off a uh, big time um where we had memes made of the grab bag um i don't think it helped that it was on the same day as the launch of the brexit um um campaign um, but we had uh, a lot of um, positive and negative comments, um, but all um, <laughs> that um, went to uh, for, for our favour that I think everybody knows a bit about how to have a grab bag now. Um, again, going back a few years, 2004 in the UK, the government released the Preparing for Emergencies booklet. Um, that soon got withdrawn and the website closed down but there still is a spoof site um tom scott who's an entertainer remains um so it just um yeah and i don't know why that's not been put, pulled down but if people want to go and have a look at that that's a bit of a spoof site and it's all about context as well um and i know um 
there's been a there's been a few and it's how people actually um relay their messages um so from um doncaster council did a few tweets um that got quite a lot of likes um one about um um linking in with the coronavirus so in uh, november 1970 officials in oregon decided to blow up a rotting whale carcass the whole thing went horribly wrong um and how, how they linked it to the coronavirus and um the uh, about the emu so that some can be light-hearted um and then of course we've then got um the next wave of risks following covid we've we, in the uk definitely we've got brexit and then we've got climate change over the top so um where next um so i've said before i think croatia, croatia um played along last year a few days um again the um the codes after um they're all linking with um whether you know uh, spain es or um canada ca so um, we've been approached by india as well we've spoken to south australia about doing something similar for them um so again um i think it's it's taken a campaign and sort of having your local context about what risks you have and 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 just looking and changing it to how um your residents can be a bit better prepared by using the same themes daily themes um and taking that again um we throughout um this um this year um back in northamptonshire um Back in 2015, we launched a survey um, to Northamptonshire about how prepared um, people are, individuals. Uh, we ran it again last year through um, 30 Days, 30 Ways to look on a UK wide to see how, you know, what um, if people got a plan, have they got a grab bag? Um, and we will be doing that, that again next year. Um, we're also looking, uh, we have got some campaign materials from 30 Days, 30 Ways about how to frame your messages. Um, we've also um, promoting the email sign up so people can actually, if they can't access social media, they can actually sign up uh, to get a daily email throughout the campaign as well. And just to say again, thank you very much for listening. Um, but if you do need any more information, please let us know. Um, there's emails at the end of this uh, presentation. Um, and, and that's it. I think it's a great campaign. It's very, it's very simple when it's, it's the, when the schedule's all been set and you've got the themes and you've got your outcomes, you've got, you're encouraging people to sort of sign up and partners to sign up to help and support you. Um, that's it. Have you got any questions? Thank you so much, Jo, for this presentation. It's so interesting to see how this campaign has grown and how you're working with local partners. Um, so I have a couple of questions from watching uh, your presentation. Um, so firstly, your campaign, it really demonstrates the importance of personal preparedness and kind of enabling people to be aware of risk and to be able to act accordingly. Um, so this is actually very relevant to the current period that we're all living in during, to the, during the pandemic. Um, so we all have to take responsibility for our own safety and that of others. Um, so I wondered what were your thoughts on this? Yeah, I mean, the, one, of the, one of the biggest risks uh, we have in the UK and probably all over Europe and the world at the moment is um, flu. Um, so and one of the things that we do with 30 Days 30 Ways UK is that we look at what risks there are. And obviously um, the pandemic being the biggest one, um, but it, it, it sort of throughout the campaign, it sort of gets people to look after themselves. So where we've seen many people, um, you know, uh, look, um, having to stay at home for two weeks in self-isolation, you know, have you got enough food in your in your house that you can stay indoors and look after yourself for two weeks um, without going shopping um, every other day? Um, have you uh, and that's then that's. Um, and that's without with, with having power you know what what would you do if you didn't have power and had to st uh, stay at home uh, for a couple of days or a week 
um, without power, it, it sort of gets people to look at what they should be doing. And I think the main thing, and the main thing um, that I like about 30 Days, 30 Ways, we have a day about looking after your neighbours and community members and being a good neighbour. Um, so, it, so it all fits in with um, what people are doing around COVID-19 and, and the pandemic. It's all about looking after, you know, doing the shopping, going to pick prescriptions up. Um, it's just it's just getting people to look at that. And also, when you look at your campaign, you can see that you're also supported by offline materials like the flyers. Um, so it's kind of a mix of components. And I wondered how you found that. Do you think that it's a good way to reinforce like online campaigns, social media campaigns by adding also an offline element? Yes, definitely. Because I mean, uh, we we run, the, we run this in September, so September is is pretty pretty busy for us. Um, but that doesn't mean that year year uh, round that you know through our website we've got information on there that people can just pull off and use. And we have um, we work closely with North Yorkshire, and they have um, events like the Great Yorkshire Fair. Uh, where they give out information about 30 days. We give out information in Northamptonshire when we go to community events um, to look at the website. Um, and it sort of, it picks out best practice as well. So where you think you might want a um, a community um, uh, community emergency plan, um, we, we, we share the best ones. We share the ones uh, from the UK. So people can go in there and have a look. Um, so, so it's, it's, it's good to have an offline uh, presence as well. Mm -hmm. And you're also working with many partners, we saw, like that's really grown over the years that you've been doing this. So I was thinking about if maybe other people are thinking of doing similar campaigns. Do you have any uh, tips or recommendations for them on how to work with many partners? Yeah, I think, I mean, the um, preparedness, it concerns everybody at every level. So I know uh, we, you need to get involved with um, sort of the strategy organisations that you work with, you know, the, the police, the fire, the health, make sure they're on board. So when you have a theme on, um, when well, we have a theme about washing your hands, um, that the health's involved and, and then that sort of, that spreads, but it gives you a local angle. Um, get involved with your voluntary sector. Um, they can do a lot for you um, with um, with support, in, in, obviously in an emergency, but it's good to get them involved as well. Um, and it gives it a bit of a varied, um, it's not just it's not just the local authority speaking, it's the police, the fire, the ambulance um, and the health organisations. Um, so it, it varies it up and, and it mixes the mixes or mixes it all up. Um, you know, with we work we work closely with Met Office, Environment Agency, and the RNI. So it's good to get, um, you know, just just to mix it up a bit. And I think, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that all of the campaign is run with volunteers. So I, I was thinking, what do you have recommendations with working uh, with volunteers on a campaign? Yeah. So so we do. So I give my time um, to this, and a lot of others. Uh, from um, local resilience forums and local authorities, they they do this because they want they 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 want to see it succeed, and you know they're passionate about um, preparedness. Um, so it, it's just it's just trying to um, engage with them um, and, uh, and and get them on board and, and get them you know get getting them to actually sort of lead it and, and giving them something you know something constructive to do. Mm -hmm. And we've seen, uh, as I mentioned earlier, that the campaign has really evolved over these last years. So I wondered, is there anything like what are the main lessons that you've learned? Perhaps there was something that you did in the past that you improved upon because it didn't work or something that you've introduced that has really changed how the campaign works. Um, or basically, if there's any things that you've learned over this time that you'd like to pass to others. Yeah, I think I think I think it is it's actually getting buy in from I mean, I mentioned the Emergency Planning Society have, have really took it on board this year. Um, and um, we've we've Resilience Direct in the UK. We've we've put that on Resilience Direct and they've really got it behind the campaign. And we've we've managed to get get hold of every local resilience forum to say this is the campaign this year. Um, so, you know, 
get buy-in from um sort of the the sort of top officials to get to get them to do it but also it's got to be interested and, and fun and engaging with people um is there uh, if they'll just turn off so this is why we've tried to uh do the bingo um to sort of get them to sort of print it out and 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 cross it off and it's also trying to get people to talk about things i know uh when we've done different days we've talked about it in the office um the first day day you know do you know how to people put people in the recovery position you know when you actually talk about the day it sort of spreads throughout the office it's the it's the um the water cooler talk isn't it about oh have you heard about the theme for today's 30 days um and it's to try and get them engaged like that I think once we've got people sort of talking about it, hopefully it will, it will just start spreading. And if we're all talking about the same thing each day, um, that you know, that's that's quite, um, you know, I'm really excited about that. Yeah, absolutely. It absolutely, is about starting that conversation and then it spreads uh, between everyone. Yeah. And um, I just thought to finish, like, what would be your main recommendations for people who want to communicate about personal resilience? Or a similar topic to this i think it's fine it is approaching it with with some sort of fun and finding what you know what do people what do you think people latch on to um even if it's that um if it's that if it's that meme or um or a, or a picture um but it, it's framing it's framing your social media how how people would like it it's not just a, it's not just text it's something behind it and i think uh, we have got um um, a link on these slides that will help people with with what how to frame your social media but it is trying to get someone get 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 one of the you know i mean i've i've shared it's, it's them pussycat ones that people like isn't it it's just getting that one thing um perhaps not the grab bag because that went that went mad this last year um which which was great but it, it's just it's amazing what you do find um engages with people um but it's that it's it's um it's looking at um you know what what they do but it's it's also framing it with something interesting that people can latch on to mm -hmm. and uh what well, i don't have any more questions and i just wanted to say thank you so much for uh, presenting your campaign to us i think it's super inspiring to see what you're doing and how this can actually be relevant to a lot of different countries um and how people can really pick up on these ideas um and make sort of a fun way to communicate very important messages um so thank you so much uh, thank you you're very welcome thank you for letting me have the opportunity to let you know about 30 days 30 ways